Iran is warning it will avenge the killing of one of its top generals after a U.S. airstrike killed a leader of the Revolutionary Guard. And the markets are reeling from this major ratcheting up in already tense relationships with Iran. Futures are rebounding off their lows, but they are low nonetheless. Oil is spiking now amid growing worries this could escalate into all-out war, with the president tweeting a short time ago, quote, Iran never won a war but never lost a negotiation. Senior columnist Rick Newman is with us, and Jared Blickery is at the Wi-Fi Interactive Board. Good morning to you both. Rick, what is the, what's the ultimate risk here uh, from an event like this? Uh, probably prolonged conflict in the Middle East, uh, which we're going to have at a higher level now than we probably would have had otherwise. I do not think it's likely we're going to see a conventional shooting war between the United States and Iran. Uh, Iran cannot match the United States missile for missile, tank for tank, and they know that. Um, so, I, you know, a lot of people are talking about what if Iran, Iran tries to close a strait of Hormuz, where so much oil flows out of that region. Uh, I just, I think Iran is very unlikely to do that because it can do that for a while, but the U.S. Navy and allied navies would be able to reopen the strait. I just don't think they're going to pursue some kind of traditional uh, approach like that. What they will do is conduct what the Pentagon would call asymmetric warfare. That's surprise attacks, stealth attacks, things you don't see coming. Cyber attacks. Cyber attacks, things that cannot necessarily be traced directly to Iran. Uh, they could be anything. And one reason this puts uh, a pit in my stomach is uh, this could be terrorism against airplanes or things that like that we've seen in the past. They could definitely target civilian um, sites and they could do that well outside the Middle East. Uh, so that suggests that um, this won't work. This is not necessarily all going to play out in the next couple of weeks. This is not going to be clean and tidy. It's going to be messy and it could go on for a long time. And you mentioned airlines. Uh, the airline stocks are actually much lower today as well. We're seeing oil rally though. Uh, no big surprise there. Jared, what are you keeping your eye on today. How are the markets reacting? Well, we're looking at crude oil. It's up 3.5%, really big spike, and we can see this in the overnight price action. There was the initial reports of, of the uh, attack, and here is the follow-through hitting, hitting $64 a barrel. Haven't seen that in a long time. In fact, you'd have to go to April of last year. So this is a higher price than it was when we had the Saudi Aramco drone and missile strike, and that was in September of this year. It spiked up to about 62 briefly. But as you recall, the next day, oil settled back down, and as became became apparent, apparent that, the, uh, that the facilities would be cleaned up and put back into production. Oil uh, actually dropped quite low in price after that, all the way to about $52 a barrel. We can also take a look at what stock futures are doing, and we'll take a look at our map of the world here and see just exactly how equity prices have been hit. We can see Asia down, except for the Kospi, that's up just nominally. But in Europe, we have the DAX down about one and, one and a third percent, CAC 40 down in Paris, London, the FTSE is down just nominally. But the real damage is done here in the U.S. We can look at S&P 500 futures. They're down almost 1% from yesterday's close, which was a record, by the way. Rick, this could really dent the, the investment thesis on this, on this bull market where everything is okay, global growth reaccelerates this year, and we're off to the races. It could, but, you know, we've been through many periods of hostilities in the Middle East, whether it was the first Iraq war, the second Iraq war, things that have happened intermittently since. And the global economy remains pretty well insulated from this. Uh, oil is not the same as it was, let's say, 10 or 15 years ago because of fracking here in the United States. There's a lot of uh, additional supply on the markets, which is why we have not seen oil. Uh, I mean, you know, if this happened 10 years ago, we, we would see oil over $100 a barrel for sure. So now it's uh, maybe headed towards 70. Uh, you have to ask yourself, what is in Iran's interest? And uh, they benefit to some extent from high, higher oil prices. Uh, but they also need to be able to sell their oil <laughs> to places that are buying it. So uh, I think we're going to be OK here. I mean, this could escalate further. Um, and it's, I don't think it's going to be a takedown of the global economy. It's just th this is going to be very unpredictable. And it's not going to go the way that, you know, the, sort of the armchair analysts are plotting it out with their, uh, on their ma little map of the Middle East. It's going to be very unpredictable. And think about soft targets. I mean, that's what Iran is likely to go after, which is uh, more civilian type targets than military. Does this now take precedence for investors over impeachment, over the trade war, over growth globally? 
uh, investors have to factor in all of these things, obviously. It's a multivariable equation. Uh, if there's any good news, impeachment has not really been a factor for the market. We've talked about that a lot, and we've seen that. Trade remains a factor for the market, and this is another factor. And when you talk about what, what you, know, you know, we've been talking for a while now, what could cause the next recession? And it may not be one single giant thing like a housing bust we had the last time around. It could be a confluence of a few uh, lesser things that you add them up, and they just depress confidence, they just depress growth enough to maybe tip it over. I don't think that's necessarily going to happen here, but this is a warning. This, this is going to weigh on markets in the global economy for months. Jared, back to you. So, uh, oil stocks, some of the hottest trending tickers on our site right now. As you could imagine here, we have Exxon up about half a percent in the pre-market, along with some of the other majors. Uh, Chevron is up about 0.8 percent. And then some of the smaller guys, here's Occidental Petroleum, they're up two and a quarter percent. And just a lot of movement to the upside in these stocks. We saw the same thing happen with that Saudi Aramco strike in September, but those gains were only short-lived. Uh, as the price of oil recovered, well, actually fell because of the uh, spike to the upside wasn't sustainable, uh, we saw those stocks fall as well. And we can also take a look at some of the airline stocks in the NASDAQ 100. We can see American Airlines down about half a percent here. Uh, just overall, a lot of stocks off. The green coloring you see is, is based on the close yesterday, but you'll see even Amazon is down over 1%. Apple's down nearly one. Microsoft as well and Alphabet. So kind of a risk off mood here to begin the morning. Yeah, broad based selling for sure. With the heightened risk now in the Middle East, Rick, is this going to be, are we going to see calls for uh, a heightened budget defense? Are we, you know, a defense budget? Are we going to see Democrats sort of hone in on that during the, the an election year? I don't think so. I mean, we just had a big boost in defense spending, and defense spending is up quite a lot under Trump. And besides, uh, I'm, I'm sure the Pentagon has all the tools it needs to deal with whatever develops in the Middle East. We're not talking about hundreds of thousands of ground troops, unless, unless you're in a ground war with Iran, which frankly would be a complete disaster, and I don't think anybody thinks the U.S. is going to uh, stumble into that. Uh, there is a real question about how do the Democratic presidential candidates um, play this. So, we, mm -hmm. so we've the, the storyline we've heard out of Joe Biden, for example, Joe Biden knows a lot about this, um, is, look, Soleimani, the guy uh, that this strike hit and killed, uh, he was a bad guy, uh, but this was a fairly rash way to go about it. And has Trump thought through the consequences? Possibly not. He said Trump has thrown a stick, a stick of dynamite into a tinderbox in the Middle East, and he might not be wrong about that. Well, Trump is saying he had to make these moves, though, because our armed forces were going to be... Uh, the, you uh, if, that were, if that's the case, then you certainly have to do something. But whether you do a high-profile assassination of somebody who's essentially the number two uh, or three official in Iran, I mean, that, you know, that's equivalent to the U.S. Defense Secretary or the mm -hmm. U.S. Uh, CIA chief. I mean, this is a super high-profile thing to do. It puts in, uh, Iran in a position where it must retaliate. Or, or, or it loses face in the Middle East. All right, Rick, thanks a lot. Hi, investors, Akiko Fujita here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.